the air signs tell a sort of story of the karma of Libra, which causes the life and identification of um, Aquarius, represented by the five, six, and seven of swords, which results eventually in a sort of ego death or loss of that life in, in Gemini. Okay, so this is like, again, this is not, this is advanced tarot. So this is not like hunky-dory, like tarot 101, we're going in. Okay, so we have three air signs, air being the element of the microcosm and being the element of the self, lowercase s self, as a reflection of the capital S self, which is consciousness, being, existence, bliss. And that lowercase self has this airy journey through this three signs. And just because right now I'm on this um, Vedanta kick, I'm just going to quote Shankara because he's a he's just beast. He says, he's an Advaita Vedanta, non-duality, super radical, super awesome. He says that all that Maya illusion, uh, ignorance of your oneness, ignorance of your absolute oneness causes desire and desire causes karma, action and reaction, because you take action, if you desire some, if you're under the illusion that you lack something, you go after it. And when you go after it, the action of going after it uh, creates a causal relationship with the world, which is the karma. The karma uh, creates, um, uh, eventually creates the suffering or the enjoyment and the suffering. Okay, so so to reverse that, you to let go of the karma, you have to let go of desire. To let go of desire, you have to let go of ignorance, which is the illusion that you're lacking anything at all. And to let go of that, you have to recognize the absolute consciousness. That's just like a non-dualist way to look at it that that I like. But the suit of swords really shows that for us. So in the in in the first three deacons, there's this, there's a sense of action and reaction and karma expressed on a large scale literally in like life and death like we start with this peaceful moment of okay i'm chilling i exist but then there's that three of swords and that three of swords is the pain of coming and going and the pain of coming and going can literally be life and death and a radical non-dualist might say the illusion of life and death but you know dot 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 put a pin in there put a sword in there if you want uh three of swords is the coming and going and the pain with that and then the Four of Swords is a sort of recovery from that experience. And all these experiences are fine and good and not, there's no wrong as it's just life. And then that, that coming and going, that back and forth nature showing up with these three cards um, can flow into our identifications. Uh, the coming and going of people in our life, the coming and going of experiences of, of um of things that we own, of information in our minds, all of that, um, within all of that flux, there, there, is, um, there generates a sense of self, which if it identifies with something, has preference and has not preference. I just wanna make sure I'm using the right, same as system, okay. So in that preference, non-preference, in that identity, in the, in the fact that you are, and I mean, each of you are a beautiful conglomeration of all your experiences, everything that has come and gone within your life, this life or maybe many lives, we have this uh, five, six, and seven of swords. And this is, uh, this is all about the self, about the individual journey. And the five of swords has this individual journey of, um, it's a really specific energy and it's the moment of, um, looking at yourself as something more or less than somebody else, uh, which is very seductive, very, very tempting to do. Um, and seeing anyone as above you or below you and all of the gross energy that, that that can happen here. And the Six of Swords is kind of the opposite of that, which is to say, um, let me just help people out. Let me just recognize that we are the same you know, the card of the refugee, the card of assistance, the card of traveling to better waters. And then there's a card of another departure here. So in all of this, there's manifestation in the in the five, six, and seven of swords of coming and going related to identity, relating to um, uh, yeah, problem solving, related to ego. And then and there's beauty here as well. And then, you know, this is like a departure of the norm. This is fault, like even there's sneakiness in this card. There's um, 
uh, Lord of Unstable Effort. And then we are going into this place of the darker aspects of the mind, identification, ego, which will eventually result in a sort of death of one thing or another. And so these three deacons are all of Gemini are all about the choice. And the choice, I mean, every choice comes out of, again, this is my point of view, you don't have to agree, but every choice comes out of the one choice that literally is all the time. It's what Pythagoras talks about when he talks about the the, the letter Upsilon. It's, it's in Katha Upanishad, it's in the matrix. It's, do you wanna know or do you wanna pretend? And if you want to pretend, you can pretend, but eventually you're going to come back to the choice again. So I, I'm from New Jersey. We have jug handles. And so it's kind of like this choice of do, do you want to progress and know yourself and go down that path of, of deeper self-knowledge? Or do you want to continue identifying with whatever it is you think that you are as a defense for what you think you are not? And in that latter choice, you go down a New Jersey jug handle and it just reverses, right? You just cut a U-turn or whatever. You just kind of come back to this choice. And so in the eight, nine and 10 of swords, we have this choice of, um, of doing that. In the end, one option is, is lost. So um, we have the Empress and the star here, which you'd think would get along. Um, and then we have the Mars, the Gabor giving it context. So the way I view this is Mars, Gabor comes in and provides a struggle. And the struggle the, the, that we're looking at is one of identification, self versus other, because we're in the sword suit. So sword suit is duality, ego, self versus other. So the Gabor five of swords, the Gabor plus swords connection is to me, almost enough to illustrate this, this image of somebody winning or losing. Now, we can bring in the Empress and the Star, and what Crowley says about this, for example, is that the Empress and the Star offer weakness in comparison to the Gaborah, and that the, the Mars of Gaborah outpowers the, the passive, chill energies of the Empress and the Star. And um, one way we can look at this is that the, the struggle of the Mars concerns this over-passivity and the over-passivity here, it's a very specific thing. And if you're, for my professional reader, reader mastermind kids, pay attention here, because this is something you're gonna find in your clients. Sometimes the problem that somebody is experiencing or the, 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 the recurring problem in somebody's life is not that they are doing something wrong but that they are not doing something correct for themselves. And that can be standing up for themselves or taking the bigger path, whatever that is. Or they might be, you might have clients that are defensive and because of their defensiveness, they are not allowing the flow of energy of a situation to resolve, or they're not showing up to resolve the situation because they don't believe that they can. They, they don't see themselves as, as big enough to, do, to face or to have that conversation or to keep a promise to themselves or whatever. We've all been in those places where we've chosen fear instead of like brave action that we could have chosen, right? So in those moments of fear of like, oh, you know, I, I, I don't trust myself to do that thing. There's a little bit of star and empress in that. Because the Empress, even though she is the diversity of nature and the diversity of imagination, she is a passive diversity. She doesn't initiate. She just, things flow naturally. And the star doesn't really initiate either. I mean, the star is, uh, in Crowley, it's, it's Nuit, it's space. It's this beautiful thing, but it's not this like ra radical Nuit coming down and be like, come on, people, let's go. Uh, and the star in the RWS is also, it's passive, it's healing, it's internal. And so the Geborah, comes in and challenges us when we're in this peaceful state and we don't want to say the thing that needs to be said or have the conversation that needs to be said and we're waiting for somebody else. So in the Rider Waite Smith, we can see that this has been interpreted as somebody like winning a battle that was not just or like, uh, or maybe cheating or like something kind of gross and low energy. We notice that there's no real, there's, he's standing, he's just looking. So we don't know exactly how he got these swords, but it's in his passivity not to make another choice or in their passivity not to really take a specific action to, to whatever that is. There's like a fear there in the passivity.
So from here, what we can do is we can start with what's the same and what's the same as the star. And the star being Aquarius is a sign of the individual. It's the sign of progress and it's the sign of uniqueness. But again, the star card is still passive. The difference here, well, so we still have the star energy. Difference is instead of Gaborah, which is our challenges and our struggles and our tensions and our motion and our trials, a la this five of swords moment of, oh, there's a lesson to learn here. Uh, the six of swords is one of compassion and balance and being that bigger person in whatever the situation calls for. So we have that compassion applied to the individual self, which the self in, in, in uh, Aquarius is, uh, we can take those together and we can, um, that can allude to being the bigger person. But then we also have the magician card, which brings to the star, not a passive approach, but an active approach. Mercury being an airy planet and being a fast planet and being a planet of transmission and activity and connectivity, that makes the star say, okay, I, I have the Mercury through which I can do stuff. And the vision of the star becomes more realistic through Mercury. Through Mercury, the star says, oh, I have a vision, but you know, Empress is like, oh, you're good. You can chill. We're just going to relax. You don't have to do anything. And the Gebra comes and says, oh, well, okay, then, you know, if you don't want to do anything, be lazy. And then like you face the defeat or whatever. Uh, the star here says, the Mercury comes in and says to the star, uh, magician says, hey, I, I got some magic for you. I got some tricks for you. Mercury comes in and says, hey, there is a way, there's a path from where you are to the vision that you're having, and I'm going to show it to you. And then the six, the Tifrit comes in and says, not only that, but you're going to do it in an altruistic way, in a compassionate way, in a spiritually balanced way. And so from that, we get literally a path in the water, which is Aquarius, uh, from this kind soul who's helping these refugees or his family or whatever cross to easier waters. So Mercury is also a little bit of a problem solver. Uh, Mercury gives gives that is that connective tissue of the universe is the glue that brings everything together and the star is uh yeah connects the vision to where you're at what i just did was jazz remember the thesis of the course it's all jazz it's just fun it's just drawing connections and playing with the ideas and eventually it'll happen more and more and more 